Hi guys, Asmo here and today I wanted to show you my variation, another variation of a legion farming strategy that involves a lot of different things that I have changed since the different strategy. So you can check out my previous video to see the way I got my headhunter. Basically I did that strategy for a day and then with the uh, other sales that I had from other stuff that I crafted, uh, I managed to get the headhunter in basically just the Saturday that I farmed all of this. I had like 10 divines to start with. I farmed this strategy all day I sold a bunch of stuff basically half of the money came from the farming and half of the money came from uh, selling my crafts uh, and that's how I got the headhunter but since I got the headhunter I had to change this strategy a little bit because farming harvest with a headhunter is not exactly a great idea because you spend too much time just sitting in the harvest clicking and waiting for the for the monsters to spawn and you lose your buffs so I decided to modify the strategy and this is gonna be that modified version which you can run whether you have a headhunter or not whether you have like inspired learnings or not although although those things are very very good for this strategy so it is a pretty fast strat uh, it makes a lot of money uh, if i play like all day i make anywhere between 50 and 100 divs a day and it's very very consistent um, and uh, I'm, gonna also, I'm gonna also show you how to efficiently uh, prepare yourself for running maps, how to uh, run maps quickly and roll them efficiently. Um, so that's gonna be also another thing that I'm gonna show. Uh, so let's start maybe with the um, Atlas, right? So the Atlas tree, uh, I just did some invitation to get like some uh, extra last points, uh, get 130 to 100, uh, out of 132 points um, and the main things that we are picking there are three things here uh, number one is the legion so of course we're just doing very very standard legion picking up everything except for the face off right you don't want the generals generals are generally a waste of time uh, so you'd rather pick up uh, all of the other nodes uh, this one is actually pretty important it takes a lot of points but it's very much worth taking this um, if your build um if your build can handle lead, like I really don't like this one, the protracted battle, because if you miss one monster, then you're gonna have to wait 40% longer for the legion to break, and you should have enough damage if you're doing this strategy. Don't do this strat if you don't have great AOE, right? If you don't, if you are not uh, good at killing legions, I do not recommend this strat. Um, so what's another thing that we're doing? We're doing also the harbingers. From harbinger, I made many many divines from harbingers. The harbinger uh, shards drop very. Quickly consistently in like three days i farmed like one and a half um uh Harb like one of the uh, one and a half fracture orbs right and fracture orbs are very very exp expensive right now many divines um so this is very much worth doing uh, so you just pick up all of the Harbi nodes. Um, then we are also doing Beyond. For Beyond, you have a choice of going for Uniques, going for Currency, or going for the Divination cards. All of these are good i think all of these are good uh the i, I had good luck with the uniques um i'm also running a reliquary scarab and i have dropped multiple like uh, i dropped harry's ire i dropped um aegis i dropped a bunch of uniques that have sold for real money and they are fairly consistent so this is not bad um i like the currency now because i just want a lot of uh, f like straight divine things um, i'm not sure if this also applies to the um to the tainted currency uh, uh but i'm picking this uh, regardless um, and then we are running the endless tide so that basically i have more monsters right i want to be able to kill a lot of monsters in my maps and i want to not spend much time doing it and you might think okay but you have harbies right and you're spending a lot of time killing harbies actually no with this build if you have like ignite prolif if you have great coverage if you're not uh, like if you don't need to attack like and just kill one monster after another if you like can kill every single monster at the same time as they're spawning while also clearing your legion you're, you're spending virtually no time doing this uh one of the harbies spawns at the boss from my sextant and i'm killing that at the same time as i'm killing the boss so i'm not wasting any time on that and the others i'm basically killing like i'm killing either entire like all of the waves or i'm killing like half of the waves while clearing all of the uh, legions right so i'm not really wasting any time on this so this is actually very time efficient for me as well 
same with the Beyond. So builds that have like Ignite Prolive, like great coverage, things like uh, Tornado Shot, Lightning Arrow. Uh, I don't know how Tornado Shot, Lightning Arrow deals with Harbies actually, um, but Ignite Prolive, like any, any stuff like that, uh, anything with Explode is gonna do very, very well with Harbies. Um, so I'm running this and it's been definitely very, very good. Um, I'm also running some map sustains. So I'm running a bunch of the shapings and I'm selling, I'm actually not running this shaping right now, uh, but uh, you can run a bunch of these shapings. I over sustain maps like crazy. I'm selling uh, like just as soon as I get to like huge amount of like, as soon as I like fill my entire tab full of like methods and dunes, I do them, right? So I got like dunes favorited and I got one Mesa favored and I run the, um, run the dunes just very very standard uh, and I'm just selling the stuff that I'm over sustaining. Um, another thing that we have is blue altars. I prefer the blue altars to the uh, red altars for multiple reasons. Number one, it fits better for my build, right? So I don't get, for example, like fire res, right, on the monsters. Um, I don't get the meteors or anything like that. Uh, I only get stuff that it never breaks my build. I don't care, like projectiles are fired in random directions. I'm already doing that, so nothing breaks my build, it's totally good for me. Um, so I run running the blue one and the quant in rarity works very well with this strategy because we are also trying to farm uniques, right? We're increasing the amount of uniques, we're trying to farm divination cards, so quant matters a lot. There is a lot of stuff that we benefit from quant. Another thing is this uh, quantity and rarity that we're getting from these altars also applies to chests because this is a quantity um, uh, and rarity of the area, not on your character, right? So your character's quantity and rarity, like if you were wearing quant gear, does not apply to legion chests, for example, right? But the area uh, quantity does apply to it, right? So it applies to the legion monsters and the chests. It also applies to the harbingers. So in general, I will go into the map. I'm going to show you a map example in a moment, um, but in general I will go into the map and look for the altars first, uh, kill the boss first, look for the, for the altars and then clear everything and that way I usually get a huge amount of quantity and rarity which allows me to just get much more drops, right? And the drops are very very consistent that way. And, and that's basically it when it comes to the atlas. We're also running singular focus because I don't want any other maps other than the ones I have favored. It's really like just much easier to sell them if you're only dropping the stuff that you have favored. Um, and then we're blocking. I was blocking also the abysses and the breaches, but I unblocked them just because I needed some extra points to pick up the chain of command. Um, and that's basically it. Uh, now let's look at the setup that we have here. So there, I have two variations of the setup that I'm running and that kind of depends on the delirium orbs. So I, uh, I had a bunch of different delirium orbs. Uh, if I'm running like a uh, either not a great delirium orb because, you, because I'm running them mostly for like the quantity and extra monsters, right? They help you spawn more beyond as well. Um, they're pretty cheap. It's worth running like a one a diviner's delirium orb or one fine delirium orb. Or there is a lot of other different options. I run a bunch of skittering. So when I was running the skittering ones, I was running with this setup. So you can look at the, you can see the sextants. So we have a legion. I run this one always um, for the sextants. Then we have beyond. That's also something I always run. Uh, then I have the harbinger. Very cheap sextants, very much uh, worth it for me, for my strategy. And then delirium reward fills 100% faster. I was running them because I had a very, very good um very good delirium orbs, right? So I was running like skittering delirium orbs and I made some money on them, but this is definitely uh, required if you're gonna be running uh, the expensive delirium orbs because it's simply gonna uh, just increase by a lot like how many rewards you're getting. So this is the last one of this setup and I have a last map of this setup here uh, still remaining. So we got polished divination scarab, uh, we got polished harbinger, polished legion and polished reliquary. These are fairly cheap and also I am rerolling them myself with harbinger from other polished stuff that I find um, and it's pretty easy to uh, like mostly sustain actually for the past couple of uh, uh, batches of maps I didn't really have to buy uh, scarabs as well so that's very nice and then the maps I roll them basically so that they don't break my build and that's it. I'm not really paying that much attention to them. I just have a rejects that has all of the stuff that is extremely deadly, like minus max, uh, or so for example, monsters have a 70% chance to avoid elemental ailments and I'm playing an ignite build, right? So stuff like that, that is very bad. I roll over. Um, and uh, other than that, I just don't care much, right? So I'm gonna show you how I'm rolling my maps as well, right? So usually I highly recommend having a uh, like a full tab prepared uh, if you don't have enough currency for full tab just have like part of a tab right you can block for example i was using a 
uh, I was using like these like long big long weapons uh, on the bottom so I was uh, only running like eight and now I have like 12 um, rows of everything right so uh, I can just do for example we type normal right and then we know which maps are normal so I can simply scour the maps that are not normal and then we type 20 so we know 20 percent so when we hit 20 percent quality i also recommend getting uh, there's an application called i think x mouse or something like that and it allows you to rebind uh, your left click uh, to the mouse scroll right so as i'm scrolling with my mouse up and down this is basically as if i'm clicking right it's a little bit easier on the finger and you can do this a little bit faster than just clicking so we're gonna quality all the maps to 20 I purchased everything else ahead of time because of course I don't want to like watch you like sit me me sit here and uh, do that so then uh, we can already do rare we can uh, grab this and then I'm gonna grab my rejects and I'm gonna just make sure I roll over the stuff that I don't want to run which is actually quite a lot right if you want to make a rejects I'm gonna make uh, I'm gonna put a link in the description so that we can uh, so that you can have um, easy access to this as well it's very helpful you can basically in that um, on that website you can type the mods that you don't want on your maps oh holy shit my thing moved okay that you don't want and you're gonna be able to basically just uh, easily reroll them right you don't have to like read every single modifier right so uh, normal not mormons <laughs> normal okay so we didn't uh, okay just so i don't miss any uh we got a couple of last one let me put them here so i uh can easier remember where where they are i'm terrible at the chimp game if you're familiar with the chimp game where you have to remember where something was okay last map usually the last one is the pesky one it keeps rolling the thing you don't want like monsters avoid elemental ailments okay there we go so we got all of our maps rolled and then after rolling all of our maps i'm basically gonna put a deli orb on them right so for this strategy um so this is the second uh strat where i'm not running great deli orbs i'm just running like a regular diviners for example which pays for itself and instead of the uh, deli sextants which is very expensive um, i'm running the uh, magic pack size which allows me to actually get more altars right so with the magic pack size you're gonna get more altars in your maps um, so we're basically gonna put one deli orb on each of these maps and it does cost a little bit of money up front to have all of these resources but it makes it so much faster if you can do that in one go and that's basically how i prepare my maps right and then i simply grab one row of this put on the sextants uh, select from the map device the legion right we got actually a one free legion nice uh, i make sure to put on incubators on everything except for the headhunter because when the incubator pops on the headhunter you actually lose the headhunter buffs right so i'm not putting the incubator on that because that is very annoying uh, so now that we have the legion um, I'm, I'm also accumulating nico missions there is also a strat where you can use nico missions i was using them in the previous strat so you can check out the previous video but basically if you get the mining by products and uh packed with energy for five points you can get a bunch of um, azurite and that way you can for example farm i farmed like 300 primitive chaotic resonators uh, 170 of these uh, so that's very very helpful as well so let's do a legion a blue influence and then no no need to put any missions you can put beasts for example if you want right you can put uh, whatever missions you want you can put alva if you're doing um the skittering delirium orbs in order to get extra monsters uh right now i don't care about the mission i'm just gonna show you an example uh, of a map and so as you can see like just an average random map. i don't know what we're gonna drop right so this is gonna be just like a completely uh random map that we're gonna see okay so i'm going basically along the edge of the map and I'm going toward the boss because if I kill the boss first, then I'm gonna have uh, a little bit better altars, right? And we want the altars that have uh, the quantity. Before I hit the boss, and I, if I spawn the altar, definitely wanna check it because it might have like boss drops divines or something like that. So we definitely wanna see that. Okay, fusing final boss drops greater um, eldritch uh, icons or whatever. 
definitely want to click on that. Uh, final boss drop straight exalted orbs. Yep, definitely wanted to check that one. That's like uh, 45 chaos or whatever exalted orbs are right now. So as you can see, I'm killing the boss and I'm killing the harpy at the same time because my build has shitty single target damage. I am able to just do this at the same time. Oh, those are lesser Eldritch because never mind. Still better than not getting anything. So I'm gonna click on this. Goddamn orange tornadoes, they're the worst. That Forbidden Tome. And now you can either clear just straight up or you can do, especially if you get like a Soul Eater like now, I can just very quickly dash around the map. And we can just look for some altars. So we see some altars, we got quantity, just reading. I prefer quantity over pretty much anything that isn't divine altar. I haven't never seen a divine altar by the way. So this strategy is, it is completely profitable even if you never uh, see divine altar in your life. There we go. Tainted fusing. Okay, I think we've been pretty much everywhere where we can find an altar. So we can just now do the legions. We're gonna break everything up. A little bit laggy because there is lots of monsters, lots of stuff dying, lots of explosions and proliferation. And then I'm waiting for this legion to pop and I'm gonna click on this legion and while I'm killing the first one, I'm gonna be popping the second one, right? So we save a little bit of time. We got some quantity and rarity on the map. Clearing this one, and as I clear this one, I'm gonna click on the next legion. So again, we're gonna be popping a legion while clearing the previous legion. Okay, where am I? Sometimes when you get the Shroudwalker with Headhunter, it, it jumps you around, and uh, it's very disorienting to know like which side of the legion are you actually on pay to lose the headhunter sometimes you can take off the headhunter to get rid of the shroud walker but that means you're also losing all the other buffs okay clearing all the stuff here and now we can start looting I can also see if there is a Harby, I think uh, this Harby I didn't kill. It's a King Harbinger. So we can kill this. And the shards drop very consistently. It does, uh, it does of course not happen every map, right? But you're gonna sell also, I got many divines from selling just ancient orbs and anoles and exalts, right? So you get a lot of these shards as well. And because of that, it just pays for itself even without the fracturing orbs and fracturing orbs is uh, just a huge amount of money on top of that. So we're gonna now pick everything up. I'm only picking up the best incubators. I have like very, very strict filters. So there is a lot of stuff that is not showing here, like stacks of lower currencies, um, like smaller stacks of uh, like alchemies. And ch I see like people doing this strategy and uh, I saw like Grimro's video and he's picking up like individual Val orbs. And uh, I definitely wouldn't waste time doing that. I think at this stage of the league, picking up anything that is uh, that you have to pick up hundreds of in order like to sell it uh, for barely anything. I don't, I don't think it's very much worth it. So we're mostly, okay, we get the void. So this map, we didn't really drop shit in, if I'm to be honest. Okay, this guy has a soul eater. The soul eater mobs are very, very dangerous. Normally you're gonna also see the fortunate divination card that's gonna be something that on average is gonna drop like every other map at least uh very much very often you're gonna find like multiple of these especially if you're running the uh especially if you're running the scarab right we got a couple of dunes from the fossils you're gonna also be able to reroll fossils with harvest okay this guy holy shit okay Ambush, what does ambushes mean? 
Is ambushes a shroud shroud walker, or what is the ambush? Okay, where is this guy? Okay, we got him, ladies and gentlemen, we got him. All right, so that's an example of an average map. We didn't really get much. We got uh, tainted fusing, which costs right now like 40 chaos. We got three exalteds, which costs 15, so that's 45, so that's 85, uh, 90. So just these three things, it's 100 chaos. Selling these for like 30, so that's 130. We got scarabs, basically scarabs paid for themselves. Um, so there's a bunch of stuff that we have here. This is T1 uh, amulet, so let's see, is that base worth something? It's worth like maybe 20 chaos or something, not much. Uh, got some div cards and this is just like an average one. We got half of a Maraketh as well. Um, we got five extra chaos here, some chaos here. We got some maps. So this is just like a low amount of loot map. Also the incubators didn't pop this map, but that's just an example. And hopefully this illustrates how I run the map and um, what you can expect in basically a worst case scenario with these maps right we also got annulment orbs how much are they right now 30 for divine yeah so this is a very very enjoyable strat i enjoyed it a lot made a ton of money um investing in stuff uh like i got tons of investments uh like for example you can see uh stuff like this uh, which I bought for 40 divines and now it costs over 50 divines, right? So I have like multiple items like this that I bought that I basically am going to be generating currency without even playing the game. I definitely recommend uh, trying to look for good investments and learning how to buy, like appreciating things so that you can make more money without really playing the game. So after I'm gonna run all of these maps that I have here, after I'm, I'm gonna finish this and sell everything, I'm gonna buy more investments and then I'm gonna level another character. And while I'm leveling that character, I'm gonna be making a ton of money from all of these things appreciating. So um, that's basically it. Hopefully you learned something. This is a a very very good strat and a very profitable strat at least from how many maps i run like over 100 maps of this that i run maybe like close to 200 maps of this that i run um, definitely recommend it if you have a build that can deal with legions very easily um, this is just my version of it thank you so much for watching and see you next time